Hey y'all, it's Brady. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are brand new here, hi, hello, welcome. We are a family of four. It is myself, my husband, and our seven and four-year-old girls. And on my channel, I like to share with you what's for dinner, what we're buying at the grocery store, uh, Sam's Club hauls, and a little bit of day in the life stuff as well. Uh, so if that's your sort of thing, I'd love for you to hit this subscribe button and stick around. Today's video is a fun and exciting video. It is a video uh, series that I look forward to every single year since I've been on YouTube now, and that is Fall Food Friday. So this is a collab hosted by Moss Family TV. Fallon hosts this every year, and uh, it kind of changes up sometimes what days, uh, what Fridays that we do. But this year it's gonna be this Friday, starting today, September 17th, when you see this, and then it'll be for the next three Fridays as well. So you're gonna see lots of wonderful recipes from not only my channel, but other channels. Fallon hosts this, it's an open collab. So I'm participating as well as lots of other people always participate as well. These recipes are wonderful. You are not gonna wanna miss them. So um, please check the description box down below and as soon as Fallon gets that playlist posted this evening after my video goes up because I think she's posting hers at 7 or 7 30 and then mine is going up at its normal time on at 4 on Fridays so um the description box will have a playlist and her video linked down below whenever that goes live so anyways so today I've got two recipes for you and then I'll just share with you what our plates look like at the end but um, we are doing cranberry orange chicken as well as lemon rosemary all day potatoes. All right, so the cranberry orange chicken is not my personal recipe, but it is a delicious recipe that I found online. Um, and so it will be linked down in the description box below for you as always. And then I will type out my recipe for uh, my lemon rosemary all day potatoes and uh, they are incredible. Uh, both of these recipes turned out really well. I hope that you check them out, try them for yourself and enjoy them. Thank you so much to Fallon for hosting this collab every year. I love it. I love seeing the fall recipes. I love hearing everybody's video or seeing everybody's videos and hearing from everybody involved. Uh, it's always a fun time. Fall is my favorite time of year. And uh, we love to cook around here and we love to eat. So I'm excited to participate once again. So thank you, Fallon, for hosting this collab. Let's jump right on into cooking up this delicious dinner. All right, y'all. So we're gonna start with the all day lemon rosemary potatoes. And um, so I've got aluminum foil and a nine by 13 baking dish. You can use a crock pot as well because you're gonna cook these on 250 for pretty much all day, like six to eight hours. The longer you cook them, the better. And you definitely wanna make sure it's low on 250. Um, I've got 12 small to medium russet potatoes. You could use um, you could use the yellow, like the gold potatoes or the red potatoes, but they probably won't cook as long. They'll get softer quicker. Two small yellow onions. You're gonna need a half a cup to three quarters of a cup. You'll see what I mean when we get to putting it together of chicken broth or water. I'm actually using part beef broth, part water because that's what I had on hand. I couldn't even find any chicken bouillon cubes. So we're gonna go with it. You need some salt, some pepper, rosemary, lemon, aluminum foil, two tablespoons of minced garlic, and six tablespoons of salted butter, and I have just sliced this up into thinner slices so that we get, uh, so that they're ready to go to assemble. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to slice my potatoes and um, slice my onions. And then I'll show you what that looks like when I get them all sliced up and then we will assemble um, and go from there.
Okay, so here's a look at the potatoes and the onions all sliced up and ready to go. I'm gonna get everything moved over and we'll uh, start us All right, so here is our baking dish. Got a nine by 13 pan. And I'm going to put about half, no, I think we're gonna go with all of it. So that's one cup of broth or water, whatever you have on hand. And then you're just going to start layering in your potatoes. Okay, so we've got a good layer of potatoes. We've still got a little over half left. Now we're gonna take some onion and just spread them out all over the pan as well. And I like to just make sure that they're um, kind of tucked in there. Okay, so now at this stage, I am going to go ahead and add some of the garlic. I'm going to do about half. And we're gonna add our salt and pepper. Okay. And then we will add in a few pats of butter. and more potatoes. More onion. may not need all of the onion, we'll just see. I would usually use like a large, one large onion, but then again, you can't always, you know, no. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit more garlic, and I'll probably yeah, I'll leave just a little bit for this last layer here. Okay, so a little bit more pepper. the last of our potatoes. And this is not a complete layer, like I said, um, or this is not a complete layer, but it does, um, I just like to layer some of the elements in here to make sure that we're getting everything thoroughly seasoned. So that's what that looks like now. Let me get this out of the way. So, now at this point, like I said, it wasn't a complete layer, but we do want to make sure we get everything seasoned. So, I'm going to go ahead and add in the rest of my garlic. And pepper. I'm just going to juice the lemon all over those potatoes. You're gonna want the juice of about half of a lemon. All right, so the last of our butter here. Okay, lots of butter going in. 
And then at this point, I'm gonna add in my rosemary and I'm just gonna leave it um, on the, I'm gonna make it like whole stalks here uh, because then I can just pull those out after it's done cooking. Cause you probably don't wanna bite right into that. So. All right, so that's, you know, a couple of sprigs of rosemary there. And then we're just going to cover that tightly with aluminum foil. Nice and tight. And then we're gonna throw this in the oven. So I've got everything set up to make the marinade for this cranberry orange chicken. This is not my recipe. This is actually from sweet and savory meals.com. Yes. So I will link this in the description box for y'all. Um, but what I've done is I've prepped everything that we need for the marinade. It does call to blend it and then, um, coat your chicken. So that's what I'm going to do. You will need the zest of one orange. I'm gonna reserve just a pinch to decorate the top there when it comes out of the oven later, but you need the zest of one large orange, the juice of one large orange, bone and skin on chicken. So I've got five chicken breasts there. And then you need olive oil, honey, salt, pepper, brown sugar, minced garlic, and the recipe calls for fresh cranberries, but I can't find fresh cranberries yet. So we're gonna use uh, dehydrated, like craisins, and I'm hoping that works out. So we're gonna try it and see how it goes. The only other thing that this recipe calls for is balsamic vinegar, which I do not have. So we're just going to uh, make the best of it. It only calls for a tablespoon of that. So hopefully we'll be okay without it. So I'm gonna get a set up here and then I'll show you and we'll assemble this marinade and get it going for an hour or two before we cook it. All right, so let's check on these rosemary lemon potatoes. This is of after about four hours. Um, I do believe I'm gonna keep cooking them, but I just wanted to show you what they look like after about four to five hours on that low 250 degrees. They are tender and done, but we definitely wanna keep cooking them uh, because they will get even 
more delicious. So uh, at this point, I am going to remove the rosemary. You know, if you leave a few sprigs, who cares? But I removed it, and I'm going to tuck this back in the oven until the rest of our dinner is complete, and they will be scrumptious. All right, so now it calls for us to add the rest of the cranberries. Again, I don't have fresh cranberries. So, I'm really hoping <laughs> that this works. I don't think it's going to be quite as pretty as the recipe that um, she made, but we're going to go with that. So, I've got my oven preheating to 375, and then back here, I have got olive oil. I think it's a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of honey. And then we're going to mix these together after this bakes for about 30 minutes. And then it says to brush that on the tops and broil it for a few minutes to get that nice crispy skin and caramelization. So once my oven is preheated, we'll throw this in the oven. It does say, well, it doesn't say uncovered, but it doesn't say to cover it. So I'm gonna put it in uncovered. Um, and then we will go from there. Okay, so the oven is ready. We've still got the potatoes in. And we're just gonna add the chicken. Set it for 30 minutes. Okay, so while the chicken is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the olive oil and honey. It's just a tablespoon of each, I believe, but again, that incomplete recipe will be linked down in the description box below for y'all. And then you just mix it up and then we'll use a pastry brush once it is cooked about 30 minutes for the broiling process. So this is it completed from that process. And you'll see in a minute that we did elect to cook it longer uh, just for our doneness and consistency, but always check your meat with a meat thermometer. That's the best way to know if it is done. But uh, that's what I'm going to do is just cook it a little longer probably, but um, there you go. So under the broiler for a few minutes. All right. so. Here is a look at that chicken. And like I said, it's not quite as pretty because of the cranberries there. All right, so real quick, I just wanted to show y'all that in my opinion, these are not done. Uh, they are just not quite, um, I mean, they're probably done enough that they wouldn't kill you, but uh, they're not done enough for us. So I kind of wish I would have checked that before I broiled them but I still think it'll be okay. I'm gonna pop these back in the oven while the rest of my dinner is cooking and get that chicken cooked all the way through the way we would prefer. And then I will plate everything up like I mentioned. But I just wanted to share that with you that if you use the bone-in skin on chicken breast, maybe it's different with chicken thighs, but 40 minutes is what I've cooked them at so far plus broiling for three and they're still not done, so. There's that. Okay, so here's a look at our chicken. Again, I kind of figured it wouldn't be quite as beautiful without the fresh cranberries, but I do still think it turned out really nice. I'm excited to try that. And here's a peek at our potatoes. Again, I did take the rosemary out earlier. Y'all saw that. Um, but they are nice and tender. Take a little baby fork here and show you. I mean, they are just delectable. They are so good. Absolutely delicious. And you could cook these even longer. I think I've cooked them about six hours today, but you could literally cook them all day long. So that's a look at the potatoes. Gonna cover those back up until we are ready to eat. I've got some macaroni on the stove, and then uh, when everything's done, I'll show you everything all plated up. All right, so that is dinner. It was delicious. I think next time I would use um, skinless, boneless chicken breast when I make this again just our personal preference. Um, my family is just not big on the uh, bone-in chicken, but if you love bone-in chicken or if you like chicken thighs, which uh, most of the time people cook with the bone in it, 
then you're going to love it. The flavor is incredible. I had a recipe or I had a meal one time that someone shared with us that used like Catalina dressing and cranberry sauce and things like that in the crock pot. And it was delicious, but it was really, really sweet. This is not like that. Um, it's very fruity with the orange and everything in it, but it's a totally different flavor profile than anything else I've made. And it is really, really delicious. So as you, as you saw in the video, I did not have fresh cranberries, but I still think it turned out really well. I think we got the flavor we were looking for and it was very enjoyable. So thank y'all so much for joining me. Thank you so much to Fallon for hosting this collab. Thank y'all for being here. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you are from the play, if you saw this from Fallon's channel or someone else participating in the collab. Let me know if you're new. Leave me a comment down below. And again, go check out the playlist down below. As soon as that link is available, I will provide that for you. Don't miss this incredible playlist. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.